All right, Shalom, Kahalayim, La Yahab, Ashram, Shab, Ashram, Kakadash, Double Honor to the Apostles and to the Elders of Great Millstone and Rule T12. Much peace, love, and salutations to the brothers doing this work and truth to sincerity. Shalom. So, Lakia, this is going to be uh, part two to my lesson. I had got a, um, a phone call that interrupted me while I was doing my lesson. So, uh, I'm going to continue with with the previous lesson. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. You know, this is about filthy lucre and how we're going to get a reward once the work is done. You know, this is the reward that we're going to receive because remember, the curses are going to be no more upon the nation of Israel. So what are we going to get? We're going to get blessed. And I'm going to read some of those blessings. Man. Um, Deuteronomy 28 and 1, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt, shalt hearken diligently unto the Lord, voice of the Yahweh thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments. We're going to do that perfectly in the kingdom, which I command thee this day, that the Lord, that Yahweh thy power will set thee up the on high above all nations of the earth the lord is going to set us above everybody if we listen and follow out his law sets of commandments which the law is going to be in our inward part which is a part of the new covenant so we're never going to go off again we're never going to sin again we're going to be perfectly we're going to stay above all the nations because why because we're going to keep the law perfectly the only reason why we was casted down into the positions that we have been in is because we sinned against the lord you know, so the Lord put us down, but we're going to keep it perfectly, so we're going to always be up. So how the hell is our enemy is going to get above us if we're going to always be perfect and keep everything perfectly? It's impossible. Verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. When you're out and about, we're going to be blessed. Whether will we go? Wherever we go, we're going to be blessed, man. Verse 2. I'm sorry, verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. The fruit of thy body, talking about our children, are going to be blessed. The fruit of the ground is talking about whatever we, we, what do we plant, a vineyard or fruit, you know, whatever we set our hand for it to do, we're going to be blessed. It's going to be a abundance of everything. Man. Everything that we have is going to be abundance of it. Uh, verse it says, "In the fruit of thy cattle, we're gonna have a lot of cattle. Cattle is uh would be considered um currency if you were money. It says, the increase of thy thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So we're gonna have an abundance of these things. You know, we're not gonna have one, two, three. Oh, struggling to get more. Hey, our our animals are gonna be very fruitful, man. They're gonna be popping them out." You know, because what? This, the Lord, that's the Lord increasing us, making us, giving us a lot of that. Um, verse 5 says, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. We ain't gonna have to, we're going to be blessed. We're going to have riches. We're going to have money. We're going to have wealth. What did the scripture said about Abraham? Let's get that real quick. Uh, Abraham. I think it said he was rich. Let me get that real quick. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, is it Genesis 11? Am I Genesis 18? No. Uh, bear with me. I'm not, I forgot what chapter. It's at the beginning of the chapter, too. So I'm not sure what. Let me try 11. My had told me 11. Uh, no, it's not 11. Oh, here we go. It's 13. Genesis uh, 13 and 1 it is Abram before he was called Abram. And Abram went out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot was with, with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where it was his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hi Hiya, um, ha, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abram called on the name of Yahweh. So Abraham was very rich in cattle and gold and silver. You know? Hold on, let me see. Verse 5, And Lot said, which was Abram, was with Abram, 
I'm sorry, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. So both of those, you know, Abram and Lot was very well wealthy, man. They was well off. They had a lot of cattle. They had a lot of resources and things of that nature, man. They had silver. They had gold. They had rich. They had cattle. You know, so that's just wanted to give that example that, you know, men of the scriptures, ultimately, if they followed after the Lord and did what the Lord said, they, the Lord will give you these things, man, freely. We ain't got a, you know, scheme in order to get money. The Lord, just obeying your Habash Shemel Shah is wisdom. You know, that's the top wisdom. And that wisdom comes with what? Riches, man. Look what the perfect example is King Solomon. He didn't ask for money. Ah, oh, that's a damn funeral. He didn't ask for money. What did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. And the Lord gave him things that he didn't ask for. So we ain't got it, man. The money, for anybody out there that's worried about that, bro, money is the last thing you should be fucking worried about in this world, man. This world is is vain. Let me see. Um, damn, I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. What else can it get? Oh, well, I know it's the book of First Kings, the third chapter. I just gotta find it. Uh, wisdom. Of, I'm sorry. First Kings, chapter three. You know, it says, you know, King so the Lord appeared to King Solomon in his dream and asked him, what do you want? Um, verse 5 says that, and Gion, and Gion, I'm sorry, Gibeon, Yahweh appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And the Most High asked, what, what shall I give thee? So that, that just wanted to read that part. The Lord asked what you wanted, what he wanted me to, him to give him. And what did King Solomon say? I'm going to jump by verse 9. Give thy for thy give thy for thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, and that I may discern between good and good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse ten. And the the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing, and the Most High said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither has ask riches for thyself which most people if the lord came to them and asked them what they want they're going to say riches you know it says nor has thou asked thy, the life of thine enemies but has asked for thyself understanding to discern discern judgment behold i have done according to thy words thy words lo i have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there shall there was none like thee before thee, neither shall there, I'm sorry, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou, verse 13, it says, And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. So, just because King Solomon asked for a wise and understanding heart to discern judgment, the Lord gave him that and then some things that he didn't ask for. So the Lord also gave him riches because ultimately wisdom comes with riches. Wisdom is riches, man. You know, so he set his heart upon wisdom. And the Lord also gave him riches, man. <laughs> so... Money is the last thing that anybody should be doing any type of scheme for. But, but you know, there are people out here that actually don't believe in the scripture. So that would drive. If you don't really have faith and believe in the words of the Bible, you would go out of your mind. You would do things for fickles, filthy lucre's sake because you don't understand or you and you don't believe in the words of the Lord. You don't believe that you're going to get that reward. You don't believe in these things that the scripture said past the Lord has promised to us. So, of course, you will you will have a mind not to do i mean to do uh certain things like that so back to um deuteronomy chapter 28 and um sorry what verse verse eight six says blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out verse seven says and yahweh 
shall cause thine ear enemies that rise up, to, uh, rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall not, they shall come out against you the one way and flee before the seven ways. So, um, so when we have our power and we're perfect with the Lord, and anybody think there's gonna be any type of rebellion or and there's gonna be an uprising of these nations once we have uh, control and power over them, this scripture condemns all of that shit, man. It de debunks all of that because as soon as you step up, you're gonna get squashed. Verse eight, and Yahweh shall command his, the blessing upon thee in this, thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand to do and he shall bless thee in the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee so that's pretty much it man um so everything that we do in the kingdom of heaven man we're going to be totally blessed man so money is not going to be a fucking issue this this society just has people so money hungry man you know so filthy lucre Money is not something that we're worried about, man. We're going to get that money. It's going to be a part. Riches is going to be a part of the reward, man. We're going to get wealth. We're gonna not going to be in this poor, destitute state, you know, because ultimately the elites of this society, the Edomites, they're going to cough up all of that money, all of that power, all the riches, all the gold that they have. They're going to cough that shit up, and it's going to be given to us, you know. That's, the, that's what the word restitution is. You're going to restore. You're going to return all of those things that you stole, the money, the riches. It's going to be given right back to us. And, um, so we're not concerned about money, man. So let me book real quick. Sirach chapter 10, verse 8. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So the kingdom and the power and the authority and the money and the riches and all that comes with it is going to be translated to the people of the saints, which is, which are the Israelites. So at the end of the day, we're going to inherit. We're going to get these things anyway, you know. So with that, Lord willing, this, this was edifying, man. Um, filthy lucre. This is just uh, concerning filthy lucre and slash reward. I'm not sure what the title is going to be. But it's going to be a two-part lesson. This is the second part. Just finishing it off. I'm going to close out by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, for Kakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone at Rule T12. Shalom, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the elect. Shalom.